This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. I had to get up mighty early to do it. But how many of you out there would like to see a beef cut up and know every part and piece thereof and how it's taken apart? And today we have Leonard and Mark. We're in Northern Garrett County. And I have to... How do I look? Looking good. <laughs> you like it? Uh, behind door number one, we have... Ta-da! Boy, I wish I was taking that home with me today. So we have uh, bluegrass farms here. That's the BFW. We have an individual lot number, which is assigned to each animal. And uh, this is the first side of uh, two sides of this beef. So this is uh, our variety of meats. We have uh, a tongue, kidneys, oxtail, heart, and liver. Mark uh, is writing down all of our information. We take temperatures to monitor uh, the temperature of the carcass to make sure we're meeting USDA requirements. Right. What happens during the aging process? What do you want to happen during the aging so process? So what we want to, to happen during the aging process is uh, let Mother Nature take its place and uh, break down the muscles and the meat and the fat and, allow it to be a more tender, tasteful meat for us. So Mark just took off the soot off the beef. Uh, you notice that it's still got the kidneys attached and the soot is to protect the tenderloin in the back here. Uh, we can, you actually use this a lot uh, when you go to your stores and buy bird feed. Uh, people have recipes for lard and other. Uh -huh. So now Mark is taking off uh, the secondary skirt. Of, he's just lining out where he's gonna pull it off and it just pulls right out as he, as he marks it there. Uh, you'll notice that there's a layer of skin that's on both sides of it. And Mark's gonna pull those off so it makes a nice tender piece of meat that you can make fajita meat out of, uh, stir fry. And that's what it looks like after the skin's removed and ready to go on your dinner plate. Actually, I'd never ate tongue before working here, but uh, it's actually a very tender piece of meat once you boil it down and skin it out and uh, slice it up. What Mark's doing here is he's going to count up five ribs and cut across, and then he's going to cut up another seven ribs and cut across, and that's the way we can separate the chuck from the rib and the rib from the loin. So Mark's now going to take our brisket saw, and he's going to cut that rib eye down and cut the chuck off so we can lay it on the table. So now what we have is the rib section here and the chuck section here, which uh, is only connected by this single cut here. And he's gonna cut that and we'll move on to it. We're just gonna set this rib and uh, short ribs and the rib eye over here for the time being. We'll work on this chuck. And as I was talking about before, he's gonna make a cut right here and we're gonna take that brisket off this chuck. So this is what the brisket looks like prior to taking the bone out. And you see it's got a nice layer of fat which makes it good for smoking and barbecuing. And Brisket is in right now. It is, it is. I think Mark has done this a couple hundred billion times. He's been in the business a long time. This is go to your market. Very nice. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip this chuck upside down here. And when you're looking at it, there's a blade bone that runs down the middle here and it separates the chuck from the shoulder. So what he's doing here is he's following that blade bone up and he's just gonna mark out where that top blade is so he can pull it out. So he's got it marked out and he's about to pull it off. So this is the top blade here and if you was to separate this out, this is where your flat iron stakes would come from. So he's going to run down the other side of the blade bone now, and that would be where the mock tender is. It's a uh, fairly lean piece of roast, and it, it's kind of tough, so it, it makes a real good roast that you cook in a crock pot, or you can see as he's getting to that mock tender, you can see the seam starting to pop away, and he's able to roll that mock tender out of the pocket it's in. 
Now, how is this marketed? How is that sold if you buy that piece of meat? It'd be, it'd be sold as a, it's a great two to three pound roast for you know a family to two to four. So now Mark is cutting into the shoulder roast here. This is a great boneless, boneless roast here. You see the seams. All the beef cuts have seams in them, and that's where we try to stay away from marking the meat and scoring the meat so it's not usable. So we have the shoulder clod here, and it's it's really good for a lot of practical uses. It's a nice big roast, has some fat in it for if you want to smoke it. So it's a beautiful roast. What we have left is the shank, which he's going to be able to take off here, and then the chuck row. He's popping the bone away from the shank and the top blade here. So he's going to finish removing the top blade bone here. You see there's not a whole lot of trim on this bone. Mark has a good sharp knife. That's what I was just thinking. Okay, so he's going to separate that chuck eye and he's going to cut the bone off so we get the neck bones and the chuck row. So what we have here is two pieces left of the chuck, of that chuck row. We have the chuck row and the neck bones. He's following the bone down where the neck bones run around the chuck. He's going to remove the chuck row from the bones here. This would be the equivalent of a Boston butt on a pork. So it would be great for uh, smoking and barbecuing, stew meats. So he's now removing the neck bones where the rest of this will go into trim and uh, we'll cut the neck bones for stock. So we have the shank that's left here. We'll cut it into two inch portions. It'll be great for braising. So we have a cross cut shank here. Beautiful roast. Yeah, this is uh, kind of the prized portion of the beef here. We have the short ribs, and then we have the uh, mm -hmm. prime rib. We can cut it into rib eyes. We can do bone-in rib roast, Tommy Hawk steaks, whatever you want. Just put that in my truck. We'll carry it on out for you. So when we look at the rib section here, we have the rib eye, which you can see the eye of the rib eye there. And uh, this would be, we'll remove the chime and we'll make this a boneless ribeye, and we'll cut it into steaks. So he's cutting the short ribs right now. We're cutting them into four inch pieces. And we have our short ribs here. Mark's gonna cut these between the bones to make nice portions for restaurants and uh, retail buyers so that they can sell them. And, uh, it's a great, another great braising meat. Well, we have their prime rib here. So Mark has removed the chine bone off of uh, the rib out here, and he's going to take the bones out, take the back ribs out. We're going to make this into a boneless roast. Again, you see the seams that he's pulling off there. So we got the nice fat cap on the back of the rib eye here. Now he's going to remove the tendon and the back ribs. So now we're left with the, just the tenant left in the ribeye there, which he's removing. And we got our back ribs ready for the grill. So we're ready to cut it into one inch steaks now. I'm impressed. So if we delay these out, you get some beautiful ribeyes. It's really some pretty steaks. Beautiful. And then we have our oxtail here. And I uh, don't know if you guys have ever had oxtail soup, but it's amazing. So you would just put these little segments in your favorite soup, and it really is good. So what he's now is he's getting ready to separate where the loin connects with the round. We have the rose meat on this side, which we'll go be going to our trim today, but sometimes we harvest that. And on this side, we have our flank steak, which is a great steak for fajita meat and just uh, for your grill. what the cut looks like once it's ready to go to the grill. Mark's going to lay it on the table now. So Mark has the round and the loin left here. He's going to separate them. And we're going to separate this round out into different muscles and have the top sirloin steaks. 
So if you take a look at the inside of this loin here, you can see the tenderloin that we're going to be removing. And that was where the soot was protecting it earlier. So we'll be, we'll be taking this out and making flays out of it. Uh, Mark's going to remove the silver skin on it and he's going to clean it up. So if someone was wanting to buy a whole tenderloin, this is what you'd be buying. So you can see we have some beautiful medallions here. So Mark now is going to remove his top sirloin. This can be used for roast, but today we're going to be cutting it into steaks. So this would be your top sirloin roast if you was going to leave it whole. But we're going to be cutting it into one inch steaks today. And so this is our top sirloin steak. This would actually be one of my favorite steaks on the beef. A lot of times you don't have the sinew in the, that you do in the ribeye. You can eat the whole steak. Cost is cheaper. So what he's cutting out now is the tri-tip roast off the sirloin. And it's, a, it's one of those great two to three pound roasts that come off the beef. So if you look at the loin here, you can see it looks a lot like a T-bone. Then we have the, where the tenderloin was, and that would be the porterhouse. So as the tenderloin runs out, it becomes T-bones. But today we're gonna to be making this into a boneless strip loin and cutting it to one inch steaks. Yeah, so he's removed the T-bone portion from the loin, and so now we have a boneless strip loin. And he's gonna be cutting these into one inch steaks. Mark's pretty good at portioning. So if we look at our strip steaks here, Got good marbling, it's a good looking steak. What we're left here was, is the round. We're gonna be separating this into the eye round, the top round, the bottom round. You can see all the seams that he's cutting into to be able to break this muscle apart. Lots of seams in the round. So what he's cleaning up here is the top round. It'll be moving on to, uh, we have the gooseneck on this side, which will be broken down into the pop, bottom round and the eye round. So this is for your dog, if you want to take it home to your dog. <laughs> That's about Moses' size right now. Yeah. So we're left with the, these three sections. This is the gooseneck, the sirloin tip, in the top round. And there's only one thing left to do with the gooseneck, and we're going to separate the eye round out to the bottom round. So if you look at the muscle structure of the round, you can see it's fairly lean muscle here. And that's why it makes it great for stew meats. All we have left of this animal is the shank. We'll be cutting into two inch crosscut shanks like we did before on the chuck. It's fascinating to see how this is done step by step, broken apart, and the animal has seams and guidelines that let you follow and know exactly where to go. And that's how these cuts came about, by following those and pulling out those different meat groups out. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. Oxtail stew and smoked tongue. Huh? Sounds good. You're inviting us for supper, right? Yeah, come on over. Man, thank you so much. Thanks. And thank you so much, sir. This was, yeah, a knuckle, knuckle cool. bump. There you go. Absolutely wonderful. Now we know what each particular part is. Thank you guys so much for sharing that with us.